Last Sunday, we saw one of the most iconic out-of-conference rivalries in Division I college wrestling, Iowa versus Iowa State. However, this duel was anything but fun, as very early on in the duel, fans started giving it to the Hawkeyes, and the wrestlers from Iowa gave it right back to the fans. Besides a few matches, Iowa State really didn't have the firepower to beat Iowa, even with them missing a few key wrestlers and clearly being banged up at a few weights. However, regardless of Iowa State not even winning in the long run or being favored, it still boiled down to a climactic finish, resulting in a brawl between fans, coaches, and full benches of wrestlers. But this begs the question, who exactly is to blame? Well, let's jump into it. Before we get started on the fine names discussion, hi everyone, my name is Tanner and this is True Tan Wrestling. I'm just a wrestler who likes to make videos about my favorite sport, D1 College Wrestling. If you're new to the channel or old to the channel, don't be afraid to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you can get alerts on my new videos that I upload weekly. Now, let's jump into the video. I will say after Terrakina's win at 125 over Ibarra, the arena was loud, extremely loud. Ames was no Carver Hawkeye Arena at that level, but the fans definitely packed the gym for this duel, which is respectable for such a great rivalry. The real antics started with, of course, Austin DeSano at 133 against Anasoyev, who is uh, formerly from Russia, but also has some U23 freestyle success in America. But in folk style, he's kind of an underperformer for the Cyclones. I state this because the score shows a close match, but Anasoyev basically just stalled the whole time, and DeSano just really didn't pull the trigger as much as I thought. He was a little banged up on the thumb again, so maybe that had something to do with it. Another big factor to note is that the coaching staff already started bickering at each other with this match, and when I say coaching staff, I mean probably Metcalf on Iowa State and then the brands of Iowa, so it is never good that they're bickering this early on in the duel. There was also a double stall call very early on in this match, and it was honestly ridiculous, so I really don't know what that was about. So the fans are being extremely loud, it was a close match going into the second period, and the coaches are bickering at each other, and of course, it's Austin Asano. So this is of course where everything started to go off the rails. The Asano would get a takedown in the second period, and instead of just laying out his way out of bounds when they walked out, he just held on to him and slowly walked him into the scorer's table. I will say one thing, it was not very hard, but it was definitely intentional on DeSano's part. And then Adazoyev just elbowed DeSano right in the headgear, which was kind of funny to see the reaction that unfolded. So at the end of all this, it resulted in two unsportsmanlike conducts, like we were watching a football game, and the brands actually jumped up and held DeSano back. DeSano would end up winning the match and started jumping around, pointing at the crowd, sort of dancing in the final seconds of the match, and then pointing at the Iowa State bench. And the ref actually had to grab DeSano mid-air when he was jumping just to raise his hand. <laughs> Oh my god, what is this year for? What is wrong What is wrong with this kid? Ironman would also win at 141 against Redding in a major decision, and Redding sort of put up a semi-tough fight, but at the end of the match, Ironman would point his veins and put his tongue out, sort of hinting that he has ice in his veins, so I'm sure the Iowa State fans were not much happier after he did that either. 149 was interesting because we finally saw Max Mirren back in the Iowa Hawkeye singlet, but we also saw Ian Parker make his debut, and especially at his new weight class 149. They both looked about the same, but it was only one match, so I'm curious to see Parker develop throughout the season, and it was good to see Murin is healthy. Murin would also wave his hands at some Iowa State fans, who then continued to boo him very loudly as he continued to heckle them after the match. I'll give Murin this one because he did beat a very good Ian Parker, so who really cares? I'm just saying this because I wanted to show that the Cyclone fans continued to get more and more rowdy as this duel went on. At 157 and 165, nothing crazy really happened, with Carr showing he's still the man, beating Caleb Young pretty convincingly, and Marinelli would major unranked stats. 174 saw Nelson Brands beat Divine of Iowa State in a pretty boring sudden victory win, which is unlike Nelson Brands to be lacking in offense. This is also a good time to note that there is a ton of Iowa fans also here, so the tie in the arena really started to shift and get really loud with the Iowa fans, because it was extremely loud after the Nelson Browns takedown, and it was not boos. The Brands brothers were also extremely heated at this point, which is nothing new. They normally are around this point in every duel. 184 was a match I highlighted in my Iowa lineup video, and it was a well-fought match between Coleman and Wilson, but Coleman of Iowa State just looked a little better and looked like he had a little more fight as the match went on, as he would beat Wilson. 197 and heavyweight is where the hostility returns in full force. 197 saw the return of Warner, who might still be a little banged up or just a little off because he would drop a match to Cuban recruit Batista of Iowa State. Batista is known for his extremely poor mat skills because he is from Cuba, but he would rally off a few takedowns to defeat the All-American Warner. This led to Batista slamming his headgear on the mat, which resulted in Iowa State being deducted a team point. <laughs> 
When I say he slammed it, I'm saying he really slammed it. His headgear had to have been in the air for at least three seconds after it bounced. <laughs> oh, man. I'll give it to Batista. This was his first major win and experience with fans in a college setting, so I'll let him have it, but I'm sure Iowa was really not happy about this. Heavyweight saw Cassiope dominate redshirt senior Schuler for the Cyclones. Schuler would actually knock into Cassiope intentionally during this match, and Cassiope even looked at the ref like, dude, you aren't going to say anything about this? But ultimately, Cassiope controlled the whole match, and Schuler had no answer, and he would actually get DQ'd on stall calls. The shove I just mentioned also resulted in Iowa coaches almost walking over to the Iowa State benches to start arguing. As you can see, the sportsmanship in this duel is completely lost. I seriously think Coach Telford of Iowa said this is some tough guy stuff to one of the coaches on the Iowa State bench, and all I can say is if Telford from Iowa said anything to me in that tone, I'd be completely scared. Finally, when the teams went to shake hands, they just swarmed each other, and both the brands just started grabbing Iowa guys and getting them into the locker room. David Carr and Cassiope were really the only people trying to shake hands, and Max Mirren had to violently be held back, and Iowa wrestlers were taunting the Iowa State heavyweight by holding up stalling calls with their fist, and Metcalf, as always, was chirping at the Brands brothers, who were trying to push back very large and scary Cassiope. So, do I think Iowa and Iowa State would have actually gone to a fight? Honestly, no, I think everyone's blood was just boiling from start to finish, because it is an historic rivalry. I bet if we look back, there was probably several duels between Iowa and Iowa State that ended much worse than this one, or duels where they didn't even attempt to shake hands because they knew something bad would happen. The worst that happened is that maybe a few wrestlers got shoved and a few coaches said some regrettable things that they can't take back. I'm not saying that's okay and I'm not saying I know who started it, but Iowa State seemed to be the team that started pushing, however Iowa was heckling extremely hard. None of that makes it okay as I previously mentioned. But I really don't know who to blame. Honestly, I blame both the teams equally as much. But overall, it was a great duel overshadowed by some drama at the end, unfortunately. Congrats to David Carr for showing he's still the man. The return of Max Mirren was awesome. And Batista picked up a huge win at home. This video covered more of the off-the-mat drama during the match, so I hope you all liked this. And if you did, feel free to hit that like button and leave a comment for future videos you would like to see. Battle at Beldum is this weekend between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, so you can all watch it on ESPNU, which is awesome exposure for the sport to get a wider audience. I plan to make a recap on that Sunday duel similar to this one, but a little bit more wrestling focused. Of course, if there is a fight between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, I'll be forced to cover it, but that's completely fine with me. With all that said, go check out my Cliff Keen Las Vegas recap and hit that subscribe button so I can see you guys next time. With all that said, take care you guys.